then feel the calm, inexorable voice, abolishing hope, cancelling life's golden truths, fatal its accents, smote the trembling air. That lovely world swam thin and frail, most like some pearly, evanescent farewell gleam on the faint verge of dusk in moonless eaves. Prisoner of nature, many vision spirit, thoughts creature, in the ideal's realm enjoying thy unsubstantial immortality, the subtle, marvelous mind of man has feigned. This is the world from which the yearnings came. When it would build eternity from the dust, man's thought paints images, illusion rounds. Prophesying glories it shall never see, it harbors delicately among its dreams. Behold this fleeing of light tesselled shapes, aerial raiment of unbodied gods, a rapture of things that never can be born, hope chance to hope, a bright immortal quiet. Cloud satisfies cloud, phantom to longing phantom, leans sweetly, sweetly is clasped, or sweetly chased. This is the stuff from which the ideal is formed. Its builder is thought, its base, the heart's desire. But nothing real answers to their call. The ideal dwells not in heaven, nor on the earth. A bright delirium of man's ardor of hope, drunk with the wine of its own fantasy. It is a brilliant shadow's dreamy trail. The vision's error builds the azure skies, Thy vision, Sarah, drew the rainbow's arch. Thy mortal longing made for thee a soul. This angel in thy body thou callst love, who shapes his wings from thy emotions' hues. In a ferment of thy body has been born, and with the body that housed it, it must die. It is a passion of the yearning cells. It is flesh that calls to flesh to serve its lust. It is a mind that seeks an answering mind and dreams a while that it has found its mate. It is the life that asks for a human prop to uphold its weakness lonely in the world, or feeds its hunger on another's life. A beast of prey that pauses in its prowl, it crouches under a bush in splendid flower to seize a heart and body for its food. This beast thou dreamst immortal, and a God. O human mind, vainly thou torturest an hour's delight to stretch through infinities long void and feel its formless, passionless gulps, persuading the insensible abyss to lend eternity to perishing things. And Trickst the fragile movements of the heart with thy spirit's faint of immortality. All here emerges, 
born from nothingness, encircled it lasts by the emptiness of space, a while upheld by an unknowing force, then crumbles back into its parent knot. Only the mute alone can ever be. In the alone, there is no room for love. In vain to clothe love's perishable mud, thou hast woven on the immortal's borrowed loom, the ideal's gorgeous and unfading robe. The ideal never yet was real mate, imprisoned in form that glory cannot live. Into a body shut it breathes no more. Intangible, remote, forever pure, a sovereign of its own brilliant void, unwillingly it descends to earthly air to inhabit a white temple in man's heart. In his heart it shines, rejected by his life. Immutable, bodiless, beautiful, grand and dumb, immobile, on its shining throne it sits. Dumb it receives his offering and his prayer. It has no voice to answer to his call, no feet that move, no hands to take his gifts. Aerial statue of the nude idea, virgin conception of a bodiless god, its light stirs man, the thinker, to create an earthly semblance of diviner things. Its huge reflection falls upon man's acts. His institutions are its cenotaph. He signs his date conventions with its name. His virtues adorn the ideal's sky robe and a nimbus of the outline of its face. He hides their littleness with the divine name. Yet insufficient is the bright pretense to screen their indigent and earthly make. Earth only is there and not some heavenly source. If heavens there are, they are veiled in their own light. If a truth eternal somewhere reigns unknown, it burns in a tremendous void of God. For truth shines far from the falsehoods of the world. How can the heavens come down to unhappy earth? or the eternal lodge in drifting time? How shall the ideal tread earth's dolorous soil where life is only a labor and a hope, a child of matter, and by matter fed, a fire flaming low in nature's grid? A journey's toilsome trudge with death for gold, the avatars have lived and died in vain. Vain was the sage's thought, the prophet's voice. In vain is seen the shining upward way. Earth lies unchanged beneath the circling sun. She loves her fall and no omnipotence her mortal imperfections can erase. Force on man's crooked ignorance, heaven's straight line, or colonize a world of death with gods. O traveler in the chariot of the sun, high priestess in the holy fancy shrine, 
who with a magic ritual in art's house worships the ideal and eternal love what is this love thy thought has defied this sacred legend and immortal myth it is a conscious yearning of thy flesh it is a glorious burning of thy nerves a rose of dream splendor battling the mind a great red rapture and torture of thy heart a sudden transfiguration of thy days it passes and the world is as before a ravishing edge of sweetness and of pain a thrill in its yearning makes it seem divine a golden bridge across the roar of the years a cord tying thee to eternity and yet how brief and frail how soon is spent this treasure wasted by the gods on man this happy closeness as of soul to soul this honey of the body's companionship this heightened joy this ecstasy in the veins this strange illumination of the sense if satvan had lived love would have died but satvan is dead and love shall live a little while in their sad breast until his face and body fade on memory's wall where other bodies other faces come when love breaks suddenly into the life at first man steps into a world of the sun in his passion he feels his heavenly element but only as fine sunlit patch of earth the marvelous aspect too of heaven's outburst the snake is there and the worm in the heart of the rose a word a moment's act can slay the god precarious is his immortality he has a thousand ways to suffer and die Love cannot live by heavenly food alone. Only on sap of earth can it survive. For thy passion was a sensual want defined, a hunger of the body and the heart. Thy want can tire and cease, or turn elsewhere. Or love me meet a dire and pitiless end by bitter treason, or wrath with cruel wounds separate, or thy unsatisfied will to others depart when first love's joy lies stripped and slain. A dull indifference replaces fire, or an endearing habit. imitates love an outward and an uneasy union lasts or the routine of a life's compromise where once the seed of oneness had been cast into a semblance of spiritual ground by a divine adventure of heavenly powers two strive constant associates without joy two egos straining in a single leash two minds divided by their jarring thoughts two spirits disjoined forever separate this is the ideal falsified in man's world trivial or somber this illusion comes Life's harsh reality stares at the soul. Heaven's hour, at dawn, flees into bodiless time. 
death saves thee from this and saves Sattva. He now is safe, delivered from himself. He travels to silence and felicity. Call him not back to the treacheries of earth and the poor petty life of animal man. In my vast tranquil spaces, let him sleep in harmony with the mighty hush of death. Where life lies slumbering on the breast of peace. And thou go back alone to thy frail world. Chastise the heart with knowledge, unhood and see thy nature raised into clear living heights, the heaven birds view from unimagined peaks. For when thou givest thy spirit to a dream, soon hard necessity will smite thee away. Purest delight began, and it must end. Thou too shalt know, thy heart no anchor swinging, thy cradled soul moved in eternal seas, vain are the cycles of thy brilliant mind. Renounce, forgetting joy and hope and tears, thy passionate nature in the bosom profound of a happy nothingness and wordless calm, delivered into my mysterious rest. One with my fathomless nail, all forget. Forget thy fruitless spirit's waste of force. Forget the weary circle of the birth. Forget the joy and the struggle and the pain. The vague spiritual quest which first began when worlds broke forth like clusters of fire flowers and great burning thoughts voyaged through the sky of mind and time and its eons crawled across the vast and souls emerged into mortality. But Savitri replied to the dark power, A dangerous music now thou findst, O death, Melting thy speech into harmonious pain, And flutest alluringly to tired hopes, Thy falsehoods mingled with sad strains of truth. But I forbid thy voice to slay my soul. My love is not a hunger of the heart. My love is not a craving of the flesh. It came to me from God. To God it turns. Even in all that life and man have marred, a whisper of divinity still is heard. A breath is felt from the eternal spheres. Allowed by heaven and wonderful to man, a sweet fire rhythm of passion chants to love. There is a hope in its wild infinite cry. It rings with callings from forgotten heights and when its strains are hushed to high wigged souls in their empyrean, its burning breath survives beyond the rapturous core of suns that flame forever pure in skies unseen, a voice of the eternal ecstasy. One day I shall behold my great sweet world put off the dire disguises of the gods 
unveil from terror and disrobe from sin. Appeased, we shall draw near our mother's face. We shall cast our candid souls upon a lap. Then shall we clasp the ecstasy we chase. Then shall we shudder with the long sought God. Then shall we find heaven's unexpected strain. Not only is there hope for God it's pure, the violent and darkened deities leaped down from the one breast in rage to find what the white gods had missed. They too are safe. A mother's eyes are on them and her arms stretched out in love desire her rebel sons. One who came love and lover and beloved eternal built himself a wondrous field and oped the measures of a marvelous dance. There in its circles and its magic turns attracted he arrives, repelled he flees. In the wild devious promptings of his mind he tastes the honey of tears and puts up joy, repenting and as laughter, and as wrath, and both are broken music of the soul, which seeks out, reconciled, the heavenly rhyme. Ever he comes to us, across the years, bearing a sweet new face, that is the old. His bliss laughs to us, or it calls, Concealed like a far heart, unseen and trancing flute, from moonlit branches in the throbbing woods, tempting our angry search and passionate pain. Disguise the lover seeks and draws our souls. He named himself for me, Grus at the one. For we are man and woman from the first, the twin souls born from one undying fire. Did he not dawn on me in other stars? How has he through the thickets of the world pursued me like a lion in the night and come upon me suddenly in the ways and seized me with his glorious golden beam. Unsatisfied, he earned for me through time, sometimes with rock and sometimes with sweet peace, desiring me since first the world began. He rose like a wild wave out of the floods and dragged me helpless and to seize of bliss. Out of my curtain past, his arms arrived. They had touched me like the soft persuading wind. They had plucked me like a glad and trembling flower and clasped me happily burned in ruthless flame. I too have found him charmed in lovely forms, and run delighted to his distant voice, and press to him past many dreadful bars. If there is yet happier, greater God, let him first wear the face of Sattva, and let his soul be one with him I love. So let him seek me that I may desire. For only one heart beats within my breast, and one God sits there throned. Advance, O death, 
beyond the phantom beauty of this world for of its citizens i am not one i cherish god the fire not god the tree but death to man small inflicted on our heart the majesty of his calm and dreadful voice a bright hallucination are thy thoughts a prisoner held by a spiritual cord of thy own sensuous will the hardened slave thou sendest the eagle poised to meet the sun words wing to the red splendor of the heart but knowledge dwells not in the passionate heart the heart's words fall back and her from wisdom's throne vain is the longing to build heaven on earth artificer of ideal and idea mind child of matter in the womb of life to higher levels persuades his parents steps in act they follow in the daring guide but mind a glorious traveler in the sky walks lamely on the earth with footsteps slow hardly he can mold the life's rebellious stuff hardly can he hold the galloping hoops of sense his thoughts look straight into the very heavens they draw their goal from a celestial mind his acts work painfully a common whole all the high dreams were made by matter's mind to solace its dull work in matter's jail its only house where it alone seems true a solid image of reality carved out being to prop the works of time matter on the firm earth sit strong and sure it is the first born of created things it stands the last when mind and life are slain and if it ended all would cease to be all else if it is only its outcome or its phase thy soul is a brief flower by the garden of mind created on the matter's terrain plot it perishes through the plant on which it grows for from earth's sap it draws its heavenly hue thy thoughts are gleams that pass on matter's verge thy life a lapsing wave on matters see the careful steward of truth's limited means treasuring our founded facts from this squandering power it tears mind to the tenth post of sense to a laden gray routine clamps life's caprice and ties all creatures with the cords of law a vessel of transmuting alchemists a glue that sticks together our mind and life if matter fails all crumbling cracks and falls all upon matter stands as a rock yet this security and guarantee press for credentials and impost at groups a cheat of substance where no substance is an appearance and a symbol and a knot 
its forms have no original right to birth. Its aspect of a fixed stability is the cover of a captive motion swirl, an order of the steps of energy's dance, whose footmarks leave forever the same signs, a concrete face of unsubstantial time, a trickle dotting the emptiness of space, a stable seeming movement without change, yet change arrives, and the last change is death. What seemed most real once is Nihil's show. Its figures are snares that trap and prison the sense. The beginningless void was its artificial. Nothing is there but aspects limbed by chance and seeming shapes of seeming energy, all by death's mercy breathe and live a while. All things can act by the inconscient's grace. Addict of the roseate luxury of thy thoughts, turn not thy gaze within thyself to look at visions in the gleaming crystal mind. Close not the lids to dream the forms of gods. At last, to open thy eyes, consent and see the stuff of which thou and the world are made. Inconscient in the still inconscient void, inexplicably a moving world sprang forth. A while secure, happily insensible, it could not rest content with its own truth. For something on its nation breast was born, condemned to see and know, to feel and love. It watched its acts, imagined a soul within. It groped for truth and dreamed of self and God. When all unconscious was, then all was well. I, death, was king, and kept my legal state. Designing my unwill, unerring plan, creating with a calm, insentient heart. In my sovereign power of unreality, obliging nothingness to take a form, infallibly my blind unthinking force, making by chance a fixity like fates, by whim the formulas of necessity, founded on the hollow ground of the name, the sure bizarrery of nature's scheme. I curb the vacant ether into space, a huge expanding and contracting breath, harbored the fires of the universe. I struck out the supreme original spark and spread its sparse ranked arms through the name, manufactured the stars from the occult radiances. Marshal the platoons of the invisible towns. I formed art's beauty out of atom and gas and built from chemic plasm the living man. Then thought came in and spoiled the harmonious world. Matter began to hope and think and feel tissue and nerve, both joy and agony. The inconscient cosmos strove to learn its task. An ignorant personal God was born in mind and to understand invented reason's law. 
the impersonal vast throbbed back to man's desire. A trouble rocked the great world's blind, still heart, and nature lost her white, immortal calm. Thus came this worked, incomprehensible scene of souls and messed in life's delight and pain. And matter sleep and mind's mortality, of beings in nature's prison waiting death, and consciousness left in seeking ignorance. This is the world in which thou movest, astray in the tangled pathways of the human mind, in the issueless circling of the human life, searching for the soul and thinking God is here. But where is room for soul or place for God in the brute immensity of a machine? A transient breath thou takest for thy soul, born from a gas, a plasm, a sperm, a gene, a magnified image of man's mind for God, a shadow of thyself thrown upon space, interposed between the upper and nether void. Thy consciousness reflects the world around in the distorting mirror of ignorance or upwards turns to catch imagined stars. Or if a half-truth is playing with the earth, throwing its light on a dark shadowy ground, it touches only and leaves a luminous much. Immortality thou claimest for thy spirit, but immortality for imperfect man, a god who hurts himself at every step, would be a cycle of eternal pain. Wisdom and love thou claimest as thy right, but knowledge in this world is a rustic, a brilliant procurist of nations. And human love, a posture on art stage, who imitates with verb a fairy dance, an extract pressed from hard experience, man's knowledge cast in the barrels of memory, as the hard savor of a mortal draught, a sweet secretion from the erotic glands, fluttering and torturing the burning nerves. Love is a honey and poison in the breast, drunk by it as the nectar of the gods. Art's human wisdom is no great proud power, and love no gleaming angel from the skies. If they spire beyond arch daladea, arriving sunwards with frail waxen wings, how high could reach that forced, unnatural flight? But not on earth can divine wisdom reign, and not on earth can divine love be found. Heaven born, only in heaven can they live, or else they are too perhaps, they are shining dreams. Nay, is not all thou art and doest a dream? Thy mind and life are tricks of matter's force. If thy mind seems to thee a radiant sun, if thy life runs a swift and glorious dream, this is the illusion of the mortal heart, dazzled by a ray of happiness or light, impotent to live by their own right divine, 
convinced of their brilliant unreality, when their supporting ground is cut away, these children of matter into matter die. Even matter vanishes into energies vague, and energy is emotionable not. How shall the ideals unsubstantial hues be painted stiff on earth's vermilion blur, a dream within a dream come doubly true? How shall the will of the wisp become a star? The ideal is a melody of the mind, a bright delirium of the speech and thought, a strange wine of beauty lifting thee to false sight. The noble fiction of the yearnings made, the human imperfection it must share. Its forms in nature disappoint the heart, and never shall it find its heavenly shape, and never can it be fulfilled in time. O soul, misled by the splendor of thy thoughts, O earthly creature, with thy dream of heaven, obey, design, and still the earthly law. Accept the light that falls upon thy gaze. Take what thou canst of life's permitted joy, submitting to the ordeal of fate's scourge. Suffer what thou must of toil and grief. And there, there shall approach, silencing their passionate hearts, my long calm night of everlasting sleep. There into the hush from which thou camest, retire.